Hello and welcome to another Big Finish video. Yes, I'm doing a Spooktacular special. I'm never saying Spooktacular again, but yes, um, I thought it'd be quite nice to look at a spooky, creepy story from each Doctor's Big Finish range of stories. And of course, there will be honourable mentions uh, as well, because I'm funny like that, I can't just pick one, because it just feels wrong not mentioning other creepy stories. Um, so there'll be no Jay Gone Lightfall spin-off stuff as much as I would love to say, talk about Jay Gone Lightfall Series 2 and Series 12, but they'll probably have their own video for them to shine uh, in the near future when I continue my Jay Gone Lightfoot review, so they'll have their moment to shine, don't you worry. Just a quick little disclaimer, I haven't listened to every Big Finish because, you know, there's, there's quite a lot to listen to. Uh, so there may be some scary stories what you think should be on this list, you know, but you can't have them all, can you? Because this video will probably be two hours long if I talked about all of them. Um, so without further ado, let's get going before this video does become So moving on to long. the first Doctor. Um, now this is the thing with the first three Doctors. As we get on, there's got to be more variety of, you know, creepy stories. Um, but with the first three Doctors, there's not that many, which is kind of a blessing because it makes my life a little bit easier picking these stories. Um, but, you know, I love the Companion Chronicles, the early adventures and the third Doctor adventures. And of course, you know, the short trips. Um, you know, but there isn't that many spooky stories featuring So my doctors. main choice for the first Doctor is a Companion Chronicle, which is Home Truths. Yes, just look at that cover. You can tell that it's going to be a, certainly a creepy, spooky story. I'm going to be saying that a lot throughout this video, but, you know, it is a spooktacular video. I said it again, sorry. Uh, so this is the first Companion Chronicle Simon Gurrier wrote, and if you followed my channel, you know that I absolutely adore Simon Gurrier because he just knows how to write 1960s Doctor and it's quite interesting, out of all the companions you can pick to start, you know, your companion chronicle journey, you pick Sarah Kingdom. Um, obviously only appeared in the Daleks Master Plan, so I really, you know, admire Simon Gurra for going, you know what, I'm going to do a companion chronicle featuring Sarah Kingdom. Um, and this, you know, story begins fleshing out Sarah Kingdom as a companion. Um, and obviously this is the start of the Sarah Kingdom trilogy. I'm not going to talk about how this ties into the grand scheme of the Daleks Master Plan and Sarah Kingdom as a character, because that's the whole mystery and fun of this trilogy and this is probably the fa my favourite story out of the trilogy. Um, so Home Truths is a, certainly a very interesting story because it's only basically three characters. It's basically the Doctor, Stephen and uh, Sarah Kingdom um, and it's basically a murder mystery story and this creepy house but the murder mystery is quite interesting because there's two people what were murdered but there's no you know signs of struggle on their body so this story it's quite interesting in the house, it plays around, you know, with them, you know, if you, you know, want a glass of water, a glass of water will appear. It's very mysterious and very interesting, but there's this strange entity in the house. The first Doctor, I can easily picture him within this story, um, you know, just wandering around this, you know, creepy house. You know, it kind of reminds me of the chase when he's in that sort of weird, fun, haunted house thing with the robots. But the strongest thing about Home Truths, I think, is the atmosphere. It is just so thick and rich full of atmosphere and I think that's the, the case with many stories on this list is that the atmosphere is brilliant. The, the sound design is excellent because it's got this sort of weird creepy breath what will just go along you know to sort of transition to the next scene you know like there's this weird sort of entity it's like somebody just breathing down the ne your neck and it's kind of like that it's kind of got that quality but it just sends a shiver uh, down your spine and definitely listening to this at night time it definitely you know in a pitch black room it does play tricks with your mind and Home Truths is definitely a companion chronicle you want to look out for because on the website Timescales it's rated the number one companion chronicle. So out of 80 odd companion chronicles, this is the number one story. So I don't know what more proof you want to say that this is a blooming good story. So in terms of honourable mentions for the first Doctor, I've kind of got to mention Quinnis because yeah, you've got those weird sort of plague Doctor creatures. Um, and obviously it's set before an earthly child and obviously it was referenced in Edge of Destruction so that might pique your interest and other stories I find kind of spooky featuring the first Doctor um, is from the first Doctor Companion Chronicles volume 2 with the first story which is kind of a psychological horror and then you've got the third story the bonfire of vanities um, which is obviously topical because it is around sort of you know bonfire night as well um, so that's another recommendation so those are some of the spooky first Doctor stories I recommend. So moving on to the second Doctor now I've picked an early adventure which is the second story from the second series The Forsaken uh, yes a very creepy story and it's set in World War II and it really does play off that wartime paranoia because the Doctor and crew arrive on a you know a little island outside uh, Singapore 
and there's a threat of you know imminent Japanese invasion so there's already tension there uh, which is quite cool and this story is supposed to focus on Ben Jackson obviously in the TV series he didn't get much character development because as soon as you know Ben joined and that the Doctor regenerated then obviously Jamie came along so his lines were kind of split with Fraser Hines um, so you know we meet you know Ben's dad which is kind of interesting an interesting idea what isn't really utilised that much within the story, but we're here to talk about the scary aspect of the story, and that's the creature of the Forsaken, which looks like a you know a ring wraith from uh, Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? Really, that weird hooded figure. Now, this is a brilliant idea because obviously you've got people being taken one by one, and the Forsaken feeds off fear, and that's quite interesting because obviously you've got people being scared of you know being taken, but then you're scared because of the imminent Japanese invasion. So it's a really clever claustrophobic thing what does play on the wartime sort of paranoia, which I think is really great. And uh, yeah, it's a really great sort of creepy so there story. Go. Forsaken. Um, in terms of honourable mentions, um, we've got The Emperor of Eternity, which is a companion chronicle. But I think my main honourable mention for The Second Doctor is a story from The Second Doctor Companion Chronicle box set of Volume 1, uh, which is The Malfless Dead, which is all set around sort of a train station in a signal box. And it's quite fitting because obviously this is the centenary of the end of the First World War, and this is kind of a bit, and that story is kind of a tribute to uh, the nameless soldier that was returned, um, I think, in the 1920s, I think. Um, so yeah, I think that's another honourable mention, and it's Quite a good little ghost story that is. So moving on to the third Doctor and we're going back to the Companion Chronicles and we're picking out the Ghost in the Machine which I have recently reviewed so if you want to know my full thoughts on this then go and check out that review which I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but yes, this is a very special Companion Chronicle because it was the first Companion Chronicle I ever listened to and what a way to start it is just so creepy, it is utterly brilliant and it's a story what can only be done on audio because it really plays with sound brilliantly um, the, the visuals within it because you know Jonathan Morris creates some really grim imagery you know with these skeletons you know you know in this sealed off um, science laboratory and you've got people who have literally been clawing at the walls to get out because they've been sealed in because of this weird entity what's been unleashed um, which is very interesting and obviously you've got Joe literally on her own the doctor's out cold and it's literally very much like Planet of the Daleks episode one where Joe's literally walking around with a tape recorder but the tape recorder aspect's really used well within this story um, because obviously there's this experiment going on and you know what happens if there's more than sound on uh, the tapes what happens if the person's soul is also on there the essence of that person which I think is a really creepy idea and is a really good story and it really it's just it's brilliant you know, if you want to know more of my thoughts on the ghost of the machine do check out my review because you know that's where you get the full details of this story um, but in terms of honorable mentions I think the Bluetooth is a really creepy one with the Cybermen uh, with people disappearing um, which is very interesting um, and I'm also going to recommend the short trip in the form of the time tunnel um, which is a very interesting one because it's set around this time of year and there's a mysterious tunnel and obviously tunnels are scary because darkness because people are scared of the dark and it's a really interesting story in that way and I kind of wish that we kind of have more on that story because this story does that story does lead on a bit of a cliffhanger and you kind of want more from it so those are my recommendations from the third doctor and i'm going to recommend one more story and that is the doll of death as well that's another interesting story by ah, Mark Platt. the fourth doctor renowned for that gothic horror era especially in the philip hinchcliffe stuff so this is when you're really sport for choice in terms of spooky stories because in each series of the fourth doctor adventures there is a scary story within it. There is a very gothic horror story, whether it be Destination Nerva, Phantoms of the Deep, The Crooked Man. Uh, you know, you've got The Darkness of Glass, you've got The Cloisters of Terror. And in Series 5, you've got The Labyrinth of Buddha Castle. And in Series 6, you've got The Haunting of Malkin Place. And then Series 7, The Shadow of London um, as well. So there's, there's my honourable mentions to the fourth Doctor. And this is going to sound very cliche um, because obviously Halloween is the perfect time to watch something from the Philip Hinchcliffe era. You know, it just goes hand in hand, doesn't it? So it makes sense to recommend Philip Hinchcliffe Presents, doesn't it? And it's currently on sale because obviously Big Finish have a sale for each Doctor involving Series 11. So this is on offer right now. So if you, you want to get it, then buy it now because it's definitely worth it. And obviously it's a recommendation on this list. Um, so yes, uh, this is traditional Philip Hinchcliffe stuff. The first story of the Ghost of Graustead uh, is set in the Victorian times and is very much like the Talons of Wang Chiang. 
Um, you know, it's rich in atmosphere. Uh, it's brilliant. You've got creepy nursery rhymes within it. It is just utterly creepy. Um, but I will say it does lose its little atmosphere in episode five because it goes somewhere completely different and it kind of destroys everything what the story built up in within the first five episodes. But episode six, it does go back on track. Um, but it is a really good story. It is a really creepy story, which I really do uh, enjoy. And you've got sort of freak show aspect within it. So, you know, that's, you know, kind of spooky, I guess. Um, but, you know, The Devil's Armada, which is the second story, which is a four part story which is set in Tudor England and plays with devils and imps, which is really interesting to see the fourth Doctor in that time setting. There's some really funny moments within it. has some great cliffhangers within it. It's just a really great story, which I love. I think I prefer The Devil's Armada to The Ghost of Grousted, personally. Um, but yeah, I think that this is the obvious choice for the fourth Doctor. It would feel wrong this not being the main choice because it is Philip Hinchcliffe and you know what he's like. He's great at gothic horror stories, isn't he? Um, so yeah. Philip Hinchcliffe presents as my fourth Doctor choice. Kind of obvious, but it has to be there, doesn't it? Because it's Philip Hinchcliffe presents and it's on sale, so buy it. It's really good, it's worth your time, and it's definitely worth your money. You won't be disappointed because if you can't really get into the fourth Doctor adventures and you're not really a fan of the one hour format, then this is one way of getting your traditional fourth Doctor. So, the fifth Doctor, my favorite main range Doctor, and the Doctor I just really enjoy on audio. Um, so there is quite a wide variety of fifth Doctor stuff to enjoy. Uh, there is obviously the Fifth Doctor box set with Psychodrome and the Iteration device. Psychodrome's a really good story. You know, people say it's basically Cash Revolver done right. But the main horror aspect of that box set is the Iterations of I with the Fifth Doctor and crew arriving on this sort of remote sort of island with this creepy house, you know, so they're cut off isolation. And it kind of reminds me of the woman in black, you know, with Eel Marsh House in a way. And obviously there's spooky goings on within that. The first two episodes are you know utterly creepy and definitely worth your time um you know son of the dragon is another one i want to recommend because that is brilliant because it is a pure historical where we see the doctor and perry and Eremon meet vlad v and pale obviously brown stoker's inspiration for dracula um so that is a really good story and you know it doesn't shy away from the the brutal horrors of vlad v and pale and there's a few cliche moments within this story you know like the bride of dracula uh, within it and it's by Steve Lyon so you know you're gonna get a good story in like the first five minutes you know you've got Perry and the Doctor and Erin wandering around this sort of charred uh, burnt down village and you've got somebody you know with a sort of piece of wood gone straight through them you know it just doesn't shy away from the, the grittiness of that time um, so it's a really great pure historical and I'm going to be reviewing it very soon so there we go but my main choice for the fifth Doctor and it is a recent release uh, and it seems very fitting as well because it is Ghost Walk, um, which I have reviewed. I'll leave a link in the description below for that review. But it is a utterly brilliant story by James Goss. It utilizes the companions to their advantage. You know, each companion kind of has their own sort of section, their own little mini story. It's like four mini stories, you know, what make one whole story. It's utterly clever. Um, and obviously with Ghost Walks going around, you know, some people at Halloween like to go around these creepy places and hopefully find a ghost. and. This is what the kind of story does, you know, with these catacombs um, and there's a really good villain called Sabaoth, which is just brilliant. Uh, we've got Adric nearly being hanged, you've got Nyssa being accused as a witch. It really does have everything going on within it and you've got the Fifth Doctor really pushed in a corner and you really get to see how the Fifth Doctor works and it's just a really good creepy story. Like just, there is this really unsettling feeling in part one when they, they arrive and you've just got the Fifth Doctor go, look, we shouldn't be here, we, we need to go. And it's just really good and how they just get caught up and it's just great. You've got the fifth doctor being a ghost. It's utterly amazing how James Goss has crafted so such moving a wonderful on to story. the sixth doctor now, and this is kind of an obvious choice if you've been a fan of my channel, then you know I have to pick Project Twilight. It's one of my favourite big finishes of all time. It is just morbid, it's dark, and it's a story really not for the faint-hearted. If you if of a person of a squeamish disposition then this is a story not for you because it is basically the Sixth Doctor versus vampires and the Sixth Doctor in this story is really pushed within a corner because obviously he has his duty to protect, you know, you know what the Time Lord started, you know, but, you know, even at the cost of his own life, you know, as the Fourth Doctor said in State of Decay. It is a really great story and the first scene within this story really does set the tone. You know, you've got this really dark scene to start off with and you've got this really light-hearted scene with the Sixth Doctor and Evelyn talking about the Chinese food. 
but that soon changes when they realize what's going on within this now this story really does play with the sort of vampire and time lord mythos so if you're a fan of the great vampires when this story really does explore that because we see the safe doctor you know talking to vampires you know who was on the right side of that war who was right so it's a really interesting moral dilemma within this story and part four you honestly feel like is the doctor gonna make this out alive because this story really does play with you know the vampires to their full advantage they're used really well you know the use of blood you know it's just quite a squeamish audio you know and obviously this being you know quite a brutal story you know your mind can make it as brutal as you want and it's just honestly brilliant so project twilight is definitely the one to recommend for this halloween because it honestly it is just such a brutal and morbid and dark audio it is honestly quite unsettling to be honest it is really quite a thought-provoking story especially as the story gets on because i'm a massive fan of doctor vampire stories and this is probably my favorite one because it is utterly uh, brilliant so in so, terms of other six doctor stories to recommend i've got to recommend the holy terror um it is obviously one of big finishes holy trinity stories it features the sixth doctor and you know frobisher it starts off as a really light-hearted fun adventure and then of course it soon takes a dark twist and in a way it kind of reminds me of the empty child um, it is just a really messed up story. It is just really messed up. You know, you've got the Carrionite curse. Obviously, you know, witches, you know, Sixth Doctor. That's quite a nice little story. Uh, and then we have Iron Bright, which is quite a nice little ghost story and static. There's quite a few Sixth Doctor spooky stories. And the Nowhere Place, that's another good one. But Project Twilight is the king of the Sixth Doctor spooky audio. So moving on to the Seventh Doctor. Now, the Seventh Doctor really fits those creepy and dark and mystical stories and i feel like this story really encapsulates the seventh doctor and that is master which is from the villains trilogy and it is the last story now the villains trilogy is basically a character study and a character piece for a certain villain in this case the master um now this story i have to say you know it really explores the doctor as well as the master it explores the doctor and the master's motives now the main theme for this story is about evil and morality because there's a great discussion in part two with the doctor and the master talking about morality uh, which is very interesting about morals you know you know what makes murder happen and that kind of thing because this story is really great for that because part one it starts with very creepy, you've got these weird deranged voices and the Doctor is meeting up with this assassin and basically having a cup of tea and telling him these, this story, uh, which is really well done. Um, and you've got these weird brutal murders going on and you've got this creepy house what is cursed, which, you know, it just screams, you know, horror, uh, you know, and it's just a really uh, great story. And the Master within this is really utilised, as you expect, because it is a character piece for the Master uh, within this, because the Master has no memory of how he arrived on this uh, planet so I think it's quite interesting and the story really does play um, with that and the story can be considered a little bit controversial especially in part uh, three with what it does between the doctor and the master but I'm not going to say what that is because you know that's kind of the whole sort of thing with this story but it is a brilliant story uh, red that's quite a deranged messed up audio as well there's quite a few seven doctor audios but master is certainly the one you want to listen to around this time of year. Right, on to the final recommendation, which is featuring the Eighth Doctor. Now, again, the Eighth Doctor has some very good choices, like the Silver Turk, you know, that's very good because obviously it's got Mary Shelley, uh, obviously the, the writer of Frankenstein, and we've got the Cybermen basically being Frankenstein's monster within that story, which is very good, and it was one of my first big finishes, which I absolutely love. Uh, the Silver Turk is really good, and obviously you've got the Chimes of Midnight, um, which is another good creepy story, but I've decided to go for a very recent release, and that is Ravenous 2, which is kind of moulded around the horror aspect, and it is a perfect Halloween list. And as you can see, just look at the cover, you've got these really creepy creatures, you've got the Ravenous, you've got Krampus and the Vok Robots. Um, obviously I haven't reviewed this yet, but you know, I've talked about it on Big Finish fans, but this is a blooming brilliant box set. It is the new Dark Eyes box set. It is the first Dark Eyes but Ravenous version. It is honestly the best McGann box set in about six years. I mean, that says something. This is the first McGann box where I thought, you know what, this is really consistently good. And Big Finish couldn't have released this at a better time. It is honestly such a perfect box set for Halloween and you don't need to listen to Ravenous 1 to enjoy this box set. This is just a great box set just to enjoy now because it's such a wonderful two-parter in the form of Better Watch Out and the, the Fairy Tale of Salzburg, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but Escape from Caldor, let's talk about that with them. So let's talk about the Vok robots, shall we? Because, you know, that's the main horror aspect within Escape from Caldor. You know, you've got them bursting through a wall 
uh, you've got them in these sort of air ducts and just you know grabbing people and you can just really imagine the Vop robots in that environment with their red glowing eyes and they're just great you know killing people you know without thought they're just absolutely great um, it's a great story for Helen and Liv um, because obviously they get a bit of a catch-up because the whole point of Ravenous One was you know trying to get Helen back with the Doctor and Liv um, and obviously it's a great story for Liv because you see Liv go back to Caldor and there's animosity between you know her and her sister and obviously that kind of plays on back to Doom Coalition 3 uh, with absent friends I think it was um, but you don't need to listen to that but it is you know a great story for that but the f the main highlight for this box set for me is Better Watch Out and the Fairy Tale of Salzburg um, which is just you know, Halloween, it's kind of like the Chimes of Midnight, it's kind of got that Christmas kind of spooky vibe, you can listen to it any time now and it's a great story for it, because you see the Doctor and gang go up against Krampus and it kind of has that Scherzo vibe to it because obviously you've got McGann telling the story of the Krampus and it's just a really great, full of mystery story, there's a lot of mystery within this, you know, why is the Doctor talking to this man on a hill? You know, who's this woman talking to this priest? It is absolutely great. And you've got these imps, you know, taking people who are saying, oh, you're all going to hell, you know, and taking these people away to hellfire. And you've got this great, you know, threat of Krampus. It is honestly a story what is so good. It is, you know, Better Watch Out is my personal favorite out of the two um, because it just set this story up so well. I mean, the fairy tale of Salzburg is very much. Um, Helen and Liv, you know, trying to deal without the Doctor and trying to stop this uh, thing going happening because the cliffhanger for, you know, Better Watch Out is just so good. Um, it honestly is so brilliant and I cannot praise that two-parter enough. It is brilliant. John Dorney, it is just a masterpiece. And then Seizure is where we get the Ravenous and the Ravenous is very much like an it creature, you know, very much like that type of thing, um, really, with sort of the use of clowns, which you can just about make out on the cover there. Um, and it really does play with the TARDIS, kind of has that sort of horror house um, type of feel to it, just in a TARDIS, you know, this decaying TARDIS. Um, and obviously the rooms are changing all over, so it's very tense and atmospheric. And the Doctor is great within this because he's just like, I shouldn't be here, I should go. Um, and it's honestly, the cliffhanger for, you know, Seizure, ooh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's, you know, almost as good as, uh, you know, better watch out, but pff, I cannot wait for Ravenous 2 because it's absolutely brilliant. And Seizure is a great atmospheric story. It, it, seizure as well, there are moments where you feel like there's going to be a jump scare, but, you know, it kind of uses that classic horror thing of going, you know, oh, there's an anticlimax and then bang, it happens. You know, it's kind of that type of thing. And this box set, like I said, it is perfect for Halloween. And you know it's it's got a Halloween Christmas special in the form of Better Watch Out and Fairy Tale of Salzburg. I love Ravenous too. And I'm going to continue praising it because it's one of my favourite Big Finish releases for 2018. I just I just love it to be honest. It's great. So that concludes my spooktacular video featuring one spooky story featuring each Doctor and of course honourable mentions thrown in there as well. So, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much and bye bye.